When I consider what a first party game looks like, I believe I'm finally seeing what Microsoft is trying to do with its current lineup. Where Sony delivers on surface level comfort food, these epics with enhanced visuals, storytelling, and enough budget to fund a game's development team from beginning to end, Microsoft seems to be allowing their developers to dip into more creative opportunities. Similarly, Nintendo nails vivid and colorful games across a spectrum of genres that you wouldn't expect from a first party team. Still, Xbox has the hardware to do this and also dip into graphically charged games. The result is what I wrote down within my first 10 minutes of playing Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, an indie experience with the budget of a first party. There is nothing typical about this game, especially when considering that it's a first party title. Still, we've seen settings and themes like this before in games like Asobo Studios, A Plague's Tale, and even Don't Nod with the release of Banishers. However, the difference is that Ninja Theory didn't have to make any sacrifices for the follow-up to Hellblade Senua's sacrifice. Now with the backing of a publisher with extremely deep pockets, this indie team turned first party was able to truly create exactly what they wanted. It's an experience without compromise, which in essence makes it perfect in the eyes of the creator. This is the most refined and beautiful adventure that I've ever gone on within a video game, but I don't by any means think that it's going to be for everyone. Senua's saga Hellblade 2 continues the journey of Senua as she still suffers from the burden of the people that she once lost. Her condition, a mental illness thought to be psychosis, causes voices in her head to speak up while she pushes forward to her goals. Like the original game, these voices are always present, reacting to whatever is happening around you. As you make your way across Iceland to free captured slaves, you begin to distinguish between the voices and maybe you even give them names if only to better understand Senua's mindset when approaching hardships. As events become heavier to understand, the voices also become harsher and even louder. If I can just mention this at the beginning of the review, the audio design of Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 is, by all accounts, brilliant. Incidentally, the last game that I felt the need to even use 3D audio headphones was when I was playing Ghostwire Tokyo. Rest in peace, Tango Gameworks. Your contributions to this industry will never be forgotten. Anyway, here it is almost a must because every part of your being will want to be immersed in this world. The narrative of Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 is that of heroics, determination, and guilt. It's uncomfortable most of the time while playing, I try to distinguish the rules of this nightmare, but like the people who follow Senua, I couldn't help but just believe in her. As the player, I begin to entrust myself in her. Even knowing about the words of caution and hesitation expressed by the voices in her head, I found it to be such an amazing accomplishment to be able to convey to the player that amidst doubt and uncertainty, Senua presses on, and for that, I cowered behind her. It's here that Hellblade 2 will split up the player base. This isn't Halo, Doom, or Hi-Fi Rush, which I could consider equivalent to popcorn classics. Instead, this is a game of immersion and storytelling. There are moments where you're only really expected to hold the directional button forward to guide Senua through her journey, but it's very hands-off otherwise. He brought you here. The master. Maybe he escaped. Now, there are collectibles in the form of hidden rock statues and side stories unlocked by focusing on these symbols on a pole, but that's about it. I should also add that finding all of these wooden stakes will unlock a separate new game option after you complete the game. In my first playthrough, I managed to only miss two of them, so just going off the beaten path a little reveals these hidden objects, and after completing the game, you'll be able to jump to any chapter that you want. That said, Hellblade 2 knows its brilliance. It understands itself and the experience that it wants to deliver to the player. There's a moment where you're probably three-fourths through the game and the collectibles are done. You know this because you discovered them all in order. However, Ninja Theories seem to take this amazing chance to just tell the player, stop. You don't need to hug the walls or look for the paths that the game doesn't point you on. Just enjoy the visuals from now on and be present. This was a direct call out to how I was playing before, where I could constantly walk against the walls, looking for faces, and sometimes even missing narrative beats, being overly concerned with finding all the secrets. It was such a good design choice that made me question the way I personally sink into these games. Following that point, I was able to just walk, not run, and soak in the gorgeous scenery, along with the beautiful imagery that awaited Senua down the path. 
Other gameplay elements are puzzles, which don't really move or hinder the experience. They aren't difficult and mainly require you to just line up symbols in order to progress, so I feel like they serve more as a means of pacing the narrative instead of stumping you. Outside of puzzles is combat, and it's here where I feel like the game will be divided even more among players. Similar to the first game, you'll face off against enemies one on one. Actions you have are standard in power attacks, dodge, and parry. Further, the mirror from the first game also makes a return. That said, the combat is very similar to the first experience. There isn't anything too flashy about Senua's skill set outside of her determination, and she'll get easily overwhelmed by the enormous vikings and demons that she'll face. However, it does become a bit repetitive after a few battles. Sure, they're all epic fights with high action animations and powerful matchups, but there's not much depth outside of timing. Even dying doesn't send you that far back. The bosses in the game come in the form of giants, and these are more creative in terms of what you need to do to get through the fights but there's not much else to talk about in terms of combat. The game's runtime can be anywhere from 6 to 10 hours. After completing, you unlock a special mode that allows you to hear the thoughts of Senua's companions, and damn, if you thought she had demons. There's so much to unpack from the additional playthroughs from a narrative standpoint, but I suggest taking a break and calming down after the shaking conclusion. Then, you can jump right in and experience the extras. One of the most important things I can add is if you can, don't play with subtitles. Keep the HUD clean as intended, and allow yourself to exist in Senua's world. Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 is an amazing gaming experience that drifts into the darkest of places, yet its beauty still shines. Its brutal scenarios do well to break the player, but the determination of Senua's aura guides you forward. You might say this drifts into the realm of a walking simulator or a game more about art, but I can't put these labels onto Hellblade 2 because I've never experienced anything like it from a cinematic gameplay experience. This is a game that pulls you in with its imagery and grabs hold of you with its tense narrative beats and the drive to see Senua reach her goal. And for that, Noisy Pixel is giving Senua Saga Hellblade 2 a 9 out of 10. Thanks for watching. This video is brought to you by our supporters on Patreon. Noisy Pixel is run by a group of gamers providing independent gaming coverage through news, reviews, previews, and more. Check out our Patreon to help support our continued growth and subscribe to keep up with all our future content. Noisy Pixel.